This video will show Python code, but I'm not going to explain or talk about it. If you want to see the code, check out the video description and I have the Colab notebook in there. Let's look at a regression problem. So in this dataset, we have many different areas in California. And for each of those areas, we've tabulated the total number of bedrooms in that area and the total number of rooms in that area. So the first area here has 1,283 total bedrooms and that same area has 5,612 total rooms. We can plot this on a scatter plot and we would get that on the x-axis, we have the total number of bedrooms and on the y-axis, we have the total number of rooms. So each of these blue points is an area in California and this one has a total bedrooms value of 5,000 and it has a total rooms value of roughly 17,000. We could perform a linear regression on this data and that would mean drawing a line through the data so that we would have on the x-axis the total bedrooms and we could use this linear model to predict the total number of rooms. So if we had say a total bedrooms value of 5,000 we would look up the model and say there's the intersection and then we'd predict that a new area in California with a total bedrooms of 5,000 well we'd predict that that would be roughly 24,000. This model has error and so everywhere the model is not touching one of the points we have an error or distance between the prediction and the observed value. So the vertical distance is an error and the bigger the vertical distance the more the error. If we were to look at all of the points and compare it to the line well we could sum up all of those different errors and get one big value. If we did that that would correspond to this function. Don't worry I'm going to break it down slowly. It's this function, which we'd call maybe the total absolute error. We don't actually use this function very much, and very shortly, I'll show you functions we do use. But if we were to call it this, it would be the total absolute error, because it's total, as in we're summing over everything. And so this summation symbol, i goes from one to n, is saying, hey, let i be every single data point. So all of the blues here, we're going to let i be you know, the first one, then the second one, then the third one. We're just summing over all of them. And what we're actually summing over is the absolute value between the prediction and the observed. So take this value here. Well, the observed value, this is that y value, whatever it was. And then the prediction is whatever the line would predict for that value. So the difference or the subtraction here, that would be the distance that we were referring to. And then since we weren't concerned whether some points were above the line or others were below the line, well, that would correspond to taking the absolute value because then there's no sort of positive or negative aspect. So if we sum over all of these data points and we look at the prediction and compare that to what the model says, well, we're going to get a distance or a difference here. It's the same thing. We take an absolute value and then we sum over all of those points. That is really the total absolute error and we don't really use this function. If we were to calculate this, we would get a value for this example of roughly 8.5 million. Now this is a very big number and it doesn't even have anything to do with the units because total rooms, well, it's ranging from like zero to about 36,000 or so. 8.5 million is not even close to that. Something we do actually use, a better function is simply this, but then we divide that by the number of however many data points we have. And that would create a mean or an average error estimate. So we would call this the mean absolute error, which is simply that same thing there. This is the total absolute error, but then we divide that by n, which is the number of data points. If we were to do that, then we would have a mean absolute error of roughly 500. And this has a great interpretation. Looking at our line, what it basically means is on average, as in if you were to look across all data points, the mean or average amount that we're off by, as in the distance or the error for each data point, on average, it's saying we're off by about 500. And that actually makes sense because that 500 is in the units of the y-axis. It's in the units of total rooms because if we're off by 500, well, that's saying, okay, in general, our model is off by about 500 total rooms. That tells you it's actually pretty good. So that means if we were to get, say, a new area, say, a total bedrooms with, say, 6,000, 
Well, we could go to predict that. And beforehand, we would guess that, hey, I'm going to guess that our model would be off by about 500. It's not perfect. It's off by about 500, but it's going to be pretty close. Another very common error function or metric is referred to as the mean squared error. So the first one we looked at was summing over everything, the absolute values. This is the total absolute error. And then we took the average of that and we got the mean absolute error. Well, now we're looking at this thing called the mean squared error. And so what that is, it's still going to be an average, but it's going to be the squared there. So instead of taking the absolute value, we are actually squaring this difference. This has a similar effect to what the absolute value does because it still makes all of these differences positive after you apply either the absolute or the squared. Absolute value literally means if it's negative, make it positive. And so that means that, you know, we're not going to have like a total negative error metric. We're still going to have it range from zero because if you're off by, you know, nothing every single time, then it'll be zero. Otherwise, if you're using the absolute value or the squared, well, it's still going to make each of these differences after you apply that function, it'll be positive. As in, we're not caring whether the model is below the points or above the points. It's still looking at just the distance, but now we're squaring it instead of taking the absolute value. As you may have guessed, this does have the side effect of making the error metric very big again. So before we got it down to about 500, taking the mean absolute error, except now since we're squaring those, even though we're still taking the average of those squared errors, that's why it's called the mean or average squared error, it's still a really big number because we're squaring big differences. If we were squaring very small differences, well, the square would actually make it smaller, but since we're squaring big differences, you know, it's a big number between a predicted total room and an actual total room, since we're squaring those, well, the total error metric here is gonna be pretty big. And so, what do we often use instead? Well, we often take this value and we square root it. So what that would do is call the root mean squared error, and so it's the same thing as just the mean squared error, but rooted or square rooted, and so we're gonna get back down to those units we saw with the mean absolute error. Technically, the interpretation of this is a little confusing. It's actually the standard deviation of the unexplained variance. That's a bit of a mouthful. I would just worry about the fact that the root mean squared error is in the same units as in its 810. We're talking this is 810 rooms. But here, with the mean squared error, well, this isn't really rooms anymore. It's kind of squared rooms. Let's not really use this one mean absolute error, while well, this is again 500 rooms, and so this is a good metric. However, mean squared error itself, although it might seem from this video that it's not very useful, while it's not super useful for interpretation, it is extremely useful behind the scenes for mathematics because this function turns out to be differentiable, and I'm not going to get into that, but just know that the mean squared error is a really important function in machine learning in general. I hope that helped, and have a great day, guys.